Hey YouTube, Coppersan here. Today we're playing the upcoming MapleStory Worlds. MapleStory Worlds is a program where you can create your own games using MapleStory assets. And of course, it didn't take long for our team to completely rebuild old school MapleStory. So let's hop on board and relive some old school MapleStory memories. Arriving in Lith Harbor and hearing that music playing, it's always a great nostalgic moment for me. We just got off Maple Island and our first goal is to reach level 10. I'm playing MapleStory Worlds with about a 100 million ping, so things aren't exactly as smooth as it would be if I were actually in Korea. I guess this is what it feels like to play Misty Island for some Maplers. When of course this game is completely multiplayer as well. After adding a few stat points, I think it's time to first visit Hennessy's Hunting Route 1 so we can train over there and relive some memories and maybe some pros are there showing off already. The old school Maple Story maps were massive, so this will be quite a walk. It's definitely fun to see all those older maps again, and I've definitely forgot about a few of them as well. Oh, wait a second, quick detour. Let's see if Pig Beach is actually there. Oh man, it is. I trained here for so many hours, collecting leather to make work gloves and selling pig hats. Oh, and of course the annoying Iron Pig is there too, and it one-shots me. Wow! Nice, love these maple memories still attacking me even in the present day. The fun thing though about this whole Maple Story Worlds thing is that the game's not just released and that's it. They're also getting updated, so Hennessy's is currently all snowy and we can visit Happyville. Please bring back Happyville next on. We need Happyville, okay? That snowman is looking a bit scary though, so let's quickly head back. I actually just wanted to get some potions before we can train at Hennessy's Underground 1. The monsters here hit like a truck and we haven't gotten any gear yet, so we're taking a ton of damage. I think it's really crazy that they even made functioning shops and everything. This game is actually pretty massive. Everything has a sell price and that too, wow. And of course, we can't leave without first window shopping in the free market. They even made the teleporters work. Oh wait, those are actually stores? What the heck? You can set up your store? Okay, those items are maybe a little bit too expensive for me for now. But I guess the good news is you don't have to wait for a maintenance to get a free market one spot here. Okay, so with more pots, it is actually time to grind, so you go quickly to Hunt to Ground 1. If anything, this is one of the most iconic maps in the game. The EXP curve, though, is about the same as old school Maple Story, so things take quite a while before we're even able to get to level 10. Uh, just like the good old days. Perion is also restored back into its former glory, with dances of Balrog at the top of Perion overseeing everything back where he belongs, instead of at that bottom right where he is right now. Talking to him, we become a warrior and learn some actual skills, Power Strike and Slash Bash. Of course, we're going to become a Dragon Knight, if that's even possible, since that of course is the best class in the game at this point. I already saw some thieves and mages over at Hennessy's Underground earlier, so it looks like all jobs are there, except for maybe pirates. I want to check out the older maps around Kurning City as well. I remember training at those octopus for hours using Lucky 7 on my Dex Assassin. I never really got very far. Turns out it wasn't that easy to scroll your items for Dex back then. And of course, I couldn't resist to go to the slime tree in Alinea. This is actually easier said than done. I remember which map the slime tree was in, but there's actually four trees in total on this map that you can enter. And I was certain it was the one at the left, but I saw there were some green mushrooms in there. The other one contained horny mushrooms, but it figures I had to walk a little bit further to the left to find the actual slime tree. It wasn't the far left, I just didn't look good enough. This one was the number one grinding spot for all mages, pirates and archers. Warriors and thieves would train here too if they took the long walk around the maps though. Or took the taxi, assuming you were rich as heck. Oh, and I also want to say, uh, quickly in between, thanks everyone so much for subscribing. This channel is getting super close to 100,000 subscribers. We would be the first Western MapleStory channel to pull that off, so many thanks for that. In MapleStory Worlds, you can also, of course, dress up your character. I guess that's why the armor NPCs are not working, because you have to dress up your own avatar outside of the game, and that avatar can then be used across all games. And we're looking kind of naked right now, so let's quickly change that. Thankfully, there are plenty of free options for the poor scrubs like us as well. Looking much better now. We're not getting any defense from these items though, so we're still gonna die pretty fast. Walking back, I noticed this is definitely the time before the pirate classes even were released. There is just Victoria Island, the dungeon, and no pirate classes, no Nautilus to be seen. I wonder if we can actually access Rhina Beach and the Forest of Golems as well, even though I'll probably get one shot there. Walking back to Hennessy's, you really get a good sense of how big the maps were back then, and this is even before they added the pirate classes in the Nautilus. Walking from Hennessy's to the dungeon, I see some familiar map traps. Man, back then it was all about exploring and getting around. Doing something as simple as walking to the dungeon was a long task with traps along the way. Like this golem pit with a golem walking around just out of nowhere near Hennessy's. One shotting any unexpected mapler who would fall into it. Like uh, what happened to me, there goes another 10%. One thing that was always fun to do and always great for your wallet was trying to defeat Mushmom if she spawned. The way to Mushmom was cleverly hidden in Hennessy's itself. Only those who knew that they 
hidden portal was there, we're able to go there. The first map going to Mushbomb was full of orange mushrooms, which wasn't too bad for training those lower level characters. The next map was full of those annoying iron hawks or iron pigs like the one at Pig Beach. These pigs have really high defense and of course I lack the decks to actually hit anything. The next map is just as full with those annoying iron hawks. I actually thought it was there, I totally forgot this map even existed. And then finally the next map where Mushmum spawns. But alas, she wasn't home today. Well, I'm not sure what the respawn timer on her is, but we clearly missed her. I did see that annoying fairy flying around though, and that's bringing back a ton of unpleasant memories like junior boogies and those annoying fairies. Back in period, I actually spotted an actual gem walking around. I guess they have to grind as well, just like everyone else. <laughs> the boar area around here used to be a super popular training spot as well. I think most maplers trained here from level 20 to level 25 and some even to level 30, which would take hours. And because I keep dying, I'm not leveling up very fast either. Ugh, I really don't miss losing 10% of your EXP every time you die. Even though it is a bit laggy, the game itself is pretty much a copy of what old school MapleStory used to be. Pretty crazy that someone rebuilt the entire game asset for asset. MapleStory Worlds is a game hub and engine. People can create their own games using any of the 3 million MapleStory assets, including MapleStory 2 assets. So maybe some developer will also be able to recreate MapleStory 2 first few maps or like one of their mini games in MapleStory Worlds at one point as well. The whole thing being multiplayer is also um, pretty amazing. Just seeing others jump around, talking and hunting monsters is great. MapleStory Worlds is coming to the West next year, I'm assuming, since at least it was announced over at MapleStory Fest. I could play even more mini games from what I could see, so if you want to see more of that and what MapleStory Worlds can do, then make sure to let me know in the comments. And that was all for today. Hope you enjoyed this little nostalgic trip in MapleStory Worlds. Thank you so much for watching, thank you so much for subscribing, and as always, many thanks to our members for making these videos possible. Special thanks to Niels the Comic, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hanoi, Riley Oss, Terry Kim, Varys, Kaudi Mora, Wine Lee, History Cannon, Backspace, OTI, Safronix, Ziggy Deer, Flidiot, Knife Zoo, Cloudfix, Gusus Rodriguez, Digby, Vyra, Trevor, Michael Menchaka, Ratius, Justin Vale, Silvio Nato, Afterlord underscore MS, Striker Elk, Tidal One Pun, Radical Jaws, Riser RU, Sir Tito 655, Matthias Simerson, PC Game Life, The Passenger, Martin Panzik, Conrad Cristalis, Ace Light, Mr. Anark, Ben Wolf, Max Bernhardt, Muka 1017, BMB King, Scotty Flies Fast, Pris Killa, Brandon Cam, Vague Botnet, Fek Victor Sundström, Simak, Only, Rashid Alarudi, Gerlando Balavia, Gianfranco Calderon Canavero, Lucky Beats, Matinho Death, Gummy Bullet, Lord Fazil, Spots D. Kaiser, Zunnen, That Archie Guy, Grogo, Gravel Egg, and Louis Bento Brandao. Thank you so much for watching, stay safe, and as always, happy Maple Leaf.